Well, okay, I guess we can start for now, right? Okay, so today our uh, topic is the uh, Joseki follow-ups. Um, ah, thanks. Okay, yeah, so yeah, let, let's start now. Okay, our topic today is Joseki follow-ups. And uh, uh, when we talk about Joseki, uh, recently I have heard about those kind of points. The first one, yeah, some of my students have told me, Joseki is, is useless. Well, we don't need to study Joseki. Why? Because we just play in general what we want and what we think is right. Is that correct? Okay, uh, for this, I first want to tell uh, the value of Joseki is not as important as it was before anymore. That is true. However, Joseki is still the variation. Normally, when we talk about Joseki, it means it is a variation that has happened, for example, from many pro games and both players believe. They are correct. They are the right variation. And so, uh, to study them, you will actually kind of understand, okay, why those moves are the meaningful moves, why those moves are correct. And then that will gonna be helpful for you to actually, for example, you say, I'm not gonna for play to second at all, which is very fine. Then I hope if you find the logic uh, on how you're supposed to play your own, your own moves, your own games, your own to second, and uh, to learn the professional Joseki, we're going to help you on that. Okay, that is the first. Okay, and now we come to the second, and that is actually the most important one for us today. When we talk about Joseki, many people say Joseki means at the end the result is 50 50. I guess many of you have heard about this point. Have you? If we talk about Joseki, at the end, the, the result is 50-50. And today, I want to tell you one important truth. This expression about Joseki at the end of the result is 50-50 is a, a terrible mislead. Joseki is never 50-50. Never. Okay, this is the start. And this is the first thing I want you to know in order to understand our lecture today. Okay? And okay, so... Yeah, you may ask. Yeah, Jeff, you say Joseki is never 50-50. What is your distribution? Yeah, do we, you say it's 40-60? No, it's not Joseki anymore, right? No, it prefers one that you're going to take 60. No, okay, that's still not the case. Uh, okay, let's take some Joseki as examples, then you understand me better, okay? Okay. Uh, I guess you all know how this Joseki is from. I say, yeah, this one is a very simple one, so I guess I don't need to introduce the order. Later, we're going to uh, have some relatively complicated one. I will introduce the order, okay? Yeah, so this is a very simple one, okay? This one, if you say this is 50-50, this is 100% ridiculous. 100% ridiculous. You may ask, Jeff, how you put the number here? Um, I will probably say here, uh, if it's in 100, black probably get something like 10, and the white get maybe 3, 4, something like that. So, which means there is over 85% is undecided. Over 85% is undecided. And I remember <coughs> when I showed this variation to, yeah, to my students, many of my students complain. Jeff, I do not like this white. Why? Because I have played this in my games, and uh, I can see black get territory. In the end, by this group got attacked. So basically, what I got is minus and minus. So this is just a bad white. Okay, so how we should understand about this two seconds? What black get? I said 10. Actually, okay, that, that's just my estimation. Yeah, I actually do not know what is the exact number. But what black get here? is clearly a two space extension. On the top side, that, uh, that I'm 16 stone. We don't know what it is. And for white, white just get a two space jump in the center, especially including a high stone there at a P14. Yeah, so here you say, I can understand what black cat. Black cat is a two space extension. You'll give it a 10. Why you say white gets something like maybe three, four? Yeah, how did you get that? Yeah, so here, mainly I'm talking about P14 here. So P14 here, it is a high stone. And this is a high stone. It means in the future, 
As for what may happen at the outside, facing to the rest of the board, also including the future of M16, that high stone at P14 gave White a slight advantage. Just a slight advantage. So here, that's what White get. And the, the huge amount of this corner is actually undecided. So here, since it is undecided, so here, let's say, we normally say after this two seconds, that of course, locally, it is a, uh, yeah, it is a big possibility. After this, okay, both sides, we're gonna, we're gonna tanuki. Nobody will gonna play here for a while. But actually, both sides, we're gonna eye on this corner. And it is actually a very important factor you have to keep in your mind. That is the future of white this group. And also the future of M16 is actually important for the balance of this corner. And it is actually the majority, it's a far majority, as I mentioned, is over 85%. Yeah, that will, yeah, that is still undecided. So when you choose, no matter what you're gonna do in the rest of the board, this should be taken into consideration. And so you will need to actually, as white especially, okay, here I just take white as an example. As white, you will need to actually play on the rest of the board to concern about that two space extension. And to make sure in the future, if possible, those two stones become influence and you can use that to attack black M16, for example, or it becomes some sort of influence that work with the other high stones, you have some sort of moil, for example. In that case, the value of those two stones will be plus. And uh, yeah, why in many of my, my other students in the game, those two, the two space extensions got attacked? Well, simply, they didn't do anything after that. After this corner is done, they tanuki, and for example, white just play territorial and give black influence, and then those two stones, under that kind of circumstances, become weaker. And then, of course, then they are a weak group. Yeah, those two, two stones is just a weak group. It will be attacked. How? Here, the follow up if you talk about white, that's white can, for example, do pinza and fight. That's why the white can do this camera, so to press black down. And after this, for example, black may just push on the third line, black also may push and cut. Okay, those are variations from white. And when, when we say, okay, about black, what black may do might be, okay, black might actually attach here. Yeah, so to actually get the corner. Black might actually, for example, play Kosumi, so to prepare for the for the fight. Black might actually descend here in the corner, so to prepare for the attacking. Okay, they are all follow-ups. But the question is, in a real game, what you are gonna choose and how you are gonna decide what you are gonna choose. And I hope you understand that. You know, uh, and especially nowadays, yeah, you can easily find some either online tools or some of you might have like smart goal. And so that is a big key for database. So you can actually search from pro games about any kind of uh, certain variations. So about the variations today, I don't plan to introduce too much because you can easily find them. But here today, my, yeah, let's say my main work is actually to help you to get, after you know, okay, all those variations, what are you gonna choose? How are you gonna decide what to choose? So for example, yeah, let's say I just give this one as a simple example. After what came, okay? Normally, when black we're gonna choose to push, when, when black we're gonna choose to, yeah, choose to just put on the third line, and when black we're gonna uh, push and cut. Simply, when circumstances prefers black, and uh, there, if there's any conflict, and if you're gonna benefit black, black will push and cut. Otherwise, black will just simply push. So to prevent any, any sort of conflict. I hope this is understandable. Is it? Okay. Yeah, so, um, 
I'm not sure if uh, any of you have watched. Yeah, okay. Uh, I first need to mention, I have noticed about your voting and somebody has mentioned something that makes me laugh. And uh, uh, yeah, somebody has mentioned, I want to hear about anything, but not Africa. <laughs> Yeah, somebody has mentioned that. I don't re remember who mentioned that, but somebody has mentioned that. Uh, it's pretty funny. <laughs> and so I can imagine that probably many of you have been fed up by all those Africa stuff, and probably there's a lot that you do not understand. I'm sorry, it's inevitable, it's inevitable nowadays. Yeah, also that is the case in my lecture. I have to talk about Africa because Africa is the best player in the world. And Argo has told us a lot of truths. Yeah, and that is very important. I'm not sure has many of you have recently watched the uh, uh, Kodi and uh, uh, so it is uh, the Kodi game review. That is, uh, let's say, uh, so basically Kodi and Fan Hui, they were discussing about their uh, history games against Argo. Has any of you watched those, those videos? Any? Ah, okay, I can see. Okay, so some of you have watched it. Okay, and uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but uh, the first episode, the first episode, so it's about game one. And uh, the, in game one, in, the, in that review, the part that has happened at the bottom right corner left me deep impression. So basically, yeah, Fan Hui has to basically told us Africa doesn't really care much about who gets more points. Rather, in the, uh, in the opening, who is playing on the right direction. Direction. So basically, Africa, is, Africa told us, Fusaki is about direction. All right, so how to decide what is right direction? Okay, it's those factors I have mentioned here. I hope you understand me. So here, yeah, when we should push and cut, when we should push here? Okay, that's also the case. Yeah, let's say if it is black, move next. Okay, when I should just take away the base here, just to play the attachment and tiger down, so to take the corner, when I should directly take the corner like this and so to attack one as a whole. Okay, so basically it is the circumstances that we're gonna decide this. So it means after the Joseki here, yeah, it's just a five moves. After the Joseki here, your choice on the rest of the board is actually important. You need to work with the top right corner circumstances. And if you ignore it, then, of course, yeah, this corner, it is fine. Okay, I hope this example, it is rel relatively clear. I'm sorry if uh, my words is relatively abstract. So if, if there's anything unclear, please tell me. Is this example clear? Or you want me to show something more specific from the previous variation I have given? Any? Okay. It's clear to you, all right. We have uh, over 10 members here, and uh, I hope we will not only have uh, two persons that replies to me, okay? All right, okay, so this is one I have mentioned earlier that this is not 50-50 and as my point of view, in this corner, only less than 15% is decided. The far majority is still undecided. Okay, and here I want to give another example, which is, uh, let's say, uh, a completely different one. And okay, so here I will show this variation because many of you may not know about this Joseki, the black pencil here. But attach on it. Okay, this click. Cut here. Okay, this is end of the variation. Um okay. Uh first thing I have to ask is uh, any of you who doesn't know about this Joseki? Ah, you do not know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, probably something relatively complicated, and I can see here who answered me as, yeah, so those who doesn't know about this, 
yeah, you are mostly cupless. Okay, and uh, so since you do not know about this Joseki, this is probably a Joseki you want to look into, especially from the pro games. Yeah, and if you check the pattern search in pro games, in different pro games, maybe the variation can be slightly different. Yeah, because the circumstance is different. Here, I just uh, has chosen a variation that, let's, say, let's just imagine the rest of the board is empty. Okay, so this is a variation. If we just have a class, mm, we can say, okay, black has a corner. Black also has a part of the top side of territory. Okay, so the, basically we say black territory is countable. And if you can't hear clearly, it will be like, something like uh, close to 25 points. So that is black, it's all clear. And about white here, uh, after white, this pincer, uh, okay, here, I just want to remind, after white, this pincer, so there, inside the pincer, there's still a black stone, that is not that yet. And uh, in our, uh, let's say, when we are trying to understand this kind of variation, Please do not neglect every single detail because every single detail may matter. So before we go any further, I want to ask a question. Do you think there is any chance white can black can still separate white? No chance. Okay, I noticed a very interesting answer. 0.1%. Okay. Okay, I, okay, one person told me it's possible. Yes, means it's possible, right? It's possible for black to separate uh, black to separate one into two still. It's possible, all right. Could you tell me, I know it's uh, a, a little bit uh, annoying to actually type the coordinate one by one, but I guess here we don't have other way. Could you type to me about the possibility? It doesn't matter. Once you think it's possible, you should say it. Uh, I'm sorry, what do you mean not with one move? So you are saying, imagine if it's a call, so you black get to play two moves in a row? Aha, uh -huh. okay, well, okay, I agree with that. Okay, so yeah, you're right. Okay, that's a possibility. But if with one move, is there any possibility? No, not, not a possible, okay? Um, okay, the, I, okay, I will ask such a question. This kit is black center, right? <laughs> Let's assume white doesn't want black to get a connection because normally black uh, white wouldn't want black to get a connection. Then actually this area is completely naive. And if black play here, white will gonna prevent his connection. And then black play the Kozumi at, at Q12. Is that the case? White is separated or not? No, okay, why white will not gonna play at Q12? Because if you, okay, I will show this variation, maybe. You play at Q12, black at connection. I hope you know the first, the black already has taken away white territory here. Second, there's still this push and cut existing. Then in this area, what did white get real? If here, let's say when black play this kick and white just play at Q12 and let white get a connection, this is a variation, I have to say, it prefer black. Don't you think so? I believe you agree with my point here. Yeah, I can see your five done. Yeah, so here, if black play here, normally we should consider as white decent. And so here, my question is, does it mean white is separated? Uh, yeah. 
Okay, you read fast. <laughs> you read fast. This is what I want people to read. And yeah, you are the first one who answered me uh, as no and why. Yeah, but why? Why it can't connect from the other? So you read it. Okay. So here, Michael has mentioned that, and uh, can everyone does everyone see that here? What has an underneath connection? In the variation, I, mean, I actually intentionally chose not to play the decent and the black also. I intentionally chose not to do that. Okay, I want to make sure at least the most of us see that see that connection. Then I'm gonna show the variation. If you see if you see the variation as what can connect from that from the underneath, please uh, give me a sign. <laughs> okay. Aha. Uh, street play about that. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, let's say, uh, yeah, we can probably look into it later. And uh, uh, about that bomb, probably you also want to read it. Because here, I hope you notice what has that uh, capture and what has several stones also at line 15. Okay, but I believe you have seen it already. Has is there anyone who doesn't see the connection from the underneath that variation yet? I hope you'll try hard and read it. Not sure, okay. Good. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, yeah, the rest of you is silent. So if you don't mind, don't mind. I'm gonna show the variation. Okay. So here, while decent, and if black plays the cosmic, okay. Um, I guess uh, for like Michael, the, the faster reader, you can see the variation here already. But okay. So normally, this is what I ask my students to do. Even if, for example, you are not really in a game, you are just showing the variations. Okay, please treat yourself strictly. So even if you are just showing a variation, please show the moves exactly how you're gonna play in your games. So here, if this happens, white is supposed to normally push first. Because yeah, here, this one is selling. And if black doesn't answer, white will gonna fill black in. So black runs, you're gonna push again. And then we can see this one is selling. Black need to connect. And then street play has mentioned about this Tansuji. Yeah, in your game, it de yeah, depends on the situation. But Mike put one more at O11 before playing all the, yeah, let's say all those underneath connections. Okay. I believe now it's clear that white has this kind of connection. So black play like this cannot really separate one. Is that clear? It is clear. All right, good. Yeah, because yeah, you you, you mentioned it. Cool. So I need to make sure you are clear. Yeah, if you are clear, I guess it's clear. <laughs> All right. And uh, you have mentioned about the bomb. Yeah. And uh, if black play the bomb, actually make that kick and the decent exchange. Yeah, black can bomb here directly. But I guess you can see because white shape there is very strong. So like this, uh, you can not really find a way for black to get out, right? Can you? Well, if you can find a way, uh, please show me because actually, uh, I I I may not really know. Let's say what you see or what you didn't see. To me, it's clear. Okay. Yeah, so 
near if black bomb and like this at least locally it means here black is captured yeah so here if without any circumstances we say like this what is solid what is connected and what is alive okay so because of the, yeah so no 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 okay basically today we are talking about to second follow up so here this is an important follow up and so this i basically more or less answered many of my students question yeah they say what here is so strong is wall why you just pin the one space can i can i do further well yes you can but remember when you are doing further you are taking risk the risk is like this there is a better chance you get separated Yeah, so that's why normally as Joseki, we just a pencil here and what is connected. Okay, so the first follow up we need to know actually is yeah about this this variation actually here we we have shown it's also like this black is still in. So it means around the center area, around the center area maybe somewhere around here. If black has a stone here, why do we need to alert about it? Not necessarily what it has to answer, but what if you need to alert about the possibility black will gonna run out of, of that stone and then what could be separated. What you need to alert about this kind of possibility. As long uh, as soon as black we're gonna have a stone around the area. Okay, this is the first follow-up. I hope that's clear. Okay, and now we yeah, we go further here. So yeah, after we get to know that, yeah, let's say that's that specific detail. Now we can actually talk about what white get here. So in general, not completely, in general, white has already controlled our certain stone. And unless it comes to a special situation, black wouldn't choose to run that stone because to run that stone doesn't value tactically to separate white. Because what? If white can get a connection, white is alive. And if black run, it is very small itself. And also black, that running group itself is a burden. So black would rather choose not to run and let it down. So in general, white has captured that stone. So white has that area. And also white has some influence towards the center, right? Okay. Um, before I tell you about my point, uh, earlier, I have told you, Joseki is never 50-50. And I have given one example about why, as my point of view, it is not 50-50. So, with that kind of analysis, can you tell me, as your, let's say, your best guess in this corner, what is the distribution? Doesn't matter. Just your understanding. Sixty forty. Uh, if you say sixty forty, I believe you didn't really understand me from the last example. <laughs> okay, but anyone, anyone else, just give me your opinion. Doesn't matter. Uh, it uh, uh, well, okay. Uh, it's not that important. Uh. It doesn't matter which color you say 60 40, when you say 60 40, you don't really understand. <laughs> Sorry about that, but later I'm going to explain because I want to hear more opinions. From you. Anyone else give me an opinion? What is your distribution for this corner? I just want to make sure you understand me. And if you don't, I will use this, this example to further explain. Can anyone else give me your point? <laughs> Just one more. Anyone, please? Uh -huh. Okay, that is correct. And that is why, you know here, as I mentioned to you, no Joseki is 50-50. Why I'm mentioning this? 
because when you say Josec is 60, 50, 50 or 60, 40, no matter how you are gonna give the number, once you completely separate, divided the number, you are saying, all right, now I'm gonna play elsewhere, locally it's over. Please remember, but when you are playing a corner variation, no matter how big a corner variation, some of, the, you, you know, there are some very long Josecki, it can be 50 moves, 40 moves, 50 moves. And that I can, can actually, actually, uh, distribute uh, the local interest heavily already, but I want to tell you still it doesn't completely separate separate the yeah the interest in the local area. There's always future, and that is why the number you will give is never is never the two numbers to combine together. It's never hundred. When it is hundred, you you are saying this game is over. And uh, here I'm talking like this is mainly you, yeah, let's say you need to find out, okay, what is the number that is undecided? And uh, so how I supposed to analyze about those numbers? How am I, gonna, am I gonna fight for that number? And this is actually the reasoning why I'm saying it's never 50. Black get some. It's never towards it. Okay. Jack is the one who get more. And we say this is 50 50. It's simply because in the rest of the game, in let's say on the right side and towards the center, what is the one who has a better chance to actually get more value out of yeah out from it? But on the top side, actually, it is black who may get more out from. Still, so black yeah, so white has a better future perspective here. So locally, yeah, my uh, yeah, if you ask me, I will say very much like. Black, 40, white, 30, and there's 30 undecided. And that's 30 undecided. White is in advantage, not a big advantage, but white is in advantage. So and we, we have analyzed clearly here, white advantage is the future in general towards the center and in general on the right side, but on the top side, it is black. I hope that's clear. So this one compared to the last one, this one is the opposite one because this one, let's say, a big amount of the local area has been divided already. Yeah, not like like the last one. There's a huge amount of yeah of the local area is still very much undecided. Still, there is a lot that is undecided, and that future is something when you choose. No matter if in the local area, how you're gonna play next, or let's say when you play on the rest of, of the board, how you're supposed to concern about the yeah this area, yeah that the, that is the part that you're gonna affect your choice. I hope you understand me. Yeah, because here there's like thirty percent is undecided still, and the your choice in the rest of the board, yeah you're supposed to actually choose the variation that will gonna be helpful for you to actually get that thirty percent. Is that clear? Okay. All right. Okay. Now let's come to another example. And uh, yeah, once again, uh, you don't want you don't want me to talk about AlphaGo, but actually, I have no choice. So yeah, let's say it will be yeah. Sometimes I have to talk about AlphaGo. So here, yeah, this is a two second variation. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, so this, the, yeah, after this, after this one, uh, there are different variations. And uh, so we know one of the most common one is white attached in the corner. Yeah, and uh, okay, the first thing I want to ask you is, uh, do you know if black just push and push and intend to get the corner, 
what will be or what will gonna happen next. A black get separated. Okay, so basically you are pressing the same point. Hmm. Okay, uh I should tell you not that simple. Not that simple. But okay, uh, I will just show you a few variations, but uh, mostly I suggest you to do pattern search to learn the related variations from pro game. Well, I can live in the corner, you don't really Well, okay. Um, yeah, I will show some, I will show, show, show some variation and the variation that happened in pro game. Okay. So here, what well, normally push first. What, well, yeah, let's say mostly what well, we're going to get connection from here. Actually, no, what well, honey here, I'm sorry. And the black cut this one. At this moment, normally what well, push this one is mainly to actually cover that P15 cutting point. And uh, after that, if black here choose to connect, if black choose here to connect, what well, decent, black will cut, cut this one. Yeah, and that's why here earlier black has chosen to connect. What well, decent, Atari, cut, three, Atari this one. Okay, and then, yeah, after that, uh, in pro game, uh, it happens like this. Uh, but the order can be changed uh, also as the white came up first. But yeah, it is similar. Eventually, it come to this shape. And then white jump here. So like this, actually, white corner is dead. But white will gonna take over the outside. And uh, uh, in one pro game, it happens like white tiger, curry, and white. Yeah, so actually, you can see it's not that as that easy as why we're gonna get the corner. This is a variation white cannot get, but why we're gonna take over the all side. Okay, but let's take this one as an example. Okay, let's take this one as an example and let's talk about here what other side has got. So for what black has gotten here, I guess it's pretty clear. Black get the corner, and black this corner also has, uh, let's say. The territory that we can count okay and uh, you'll probably count faster than i do how many points okay i already have the number uh, okay hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, most of you has answered correctly. Uh, well, I, yeah, I think, yeah, let's say my counting, yeah, tell me it is in total 16, because also you need to take away white one point. Yeah, yeah, to me it's 16. Okay, so this is black territory. And for white, okay, so what black got is super clear. What black gotten here is super clear. For what white has gotten, it's not that clear. You may say, white got influence. Okay, my question is, can you find some flaw of white, of white this so-called influence? I'm not saying this is bad to white. I'm not saying it's not necessarily bad. I'm just asking, to, can you find any, some flaws on this influence? Not too difficult to help. Is that flawless? P15, yes. 
P15 is a big one, huh? Okay. Uh, will you recognize the Q12 as a problem too? Or a, pot or a potential problem? A smaller one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Both answers are right. Yes. Okay. There you cannot. You are very right that white white cannot. But that means that is not a problem for now. Under the premise when the net doesn't work, it will become a, it will become a problem. Am I right? So for example, in the future when black has a stone here, is that a kind of problem? That card should be something at least you need to concern about. Not necessarily you have to add a move. But now that card works, right? Okay. And of course, yeah, you are right. That, P, that because P15 already has to rely on letter. Yeah, if black has a letter, black can already cut. Off. Yeah, but here we still have a question. Still, the question is. Yeah, even even black has a letter, black can probably cut it off. And after the cutting off, is that good to black on? Okay, so it doesn't necessarily mean when black has a letter, black can cut. Not necessary. Yeah, black still need to wait for a good circumstances then to cut. So here, on white, this wall, white has those two miners. This is a follow up you need to know. So you know, okay. On the rest of the board, when I play, I need to actually concern about those two cutting points. So while outside is not that strong, I shouldn't easily take it as influence. I hope that's clear. And uh, that's why in pro game, this variation has happened. And probably, well, we are not professional players. We don't know yeah, how, how good or how bad this variation exactly. But since pro, yeah, there are two pro players played in their tournament game, I guess we should say this is probably playable for both. And note, I didn't say 50-50. Because here, what black get the corner territory. Well, what white get is actually this floor. Yeah, so here, if we have to make that kind of number as distribution, probably something like white cat 20, 25, and white cat less 15, 10 to 15, something like that. And what is this outside the future is still very much undecided because of the cutting points. And even if the cutting point doesn't work, it at least black and peep. And then potentially there is a possibility. But it's still not alive yet. As a whole. This is how you see about it. And then, yeah, let's say you may look into cutting possibility, keep possibility. And uh, so this kind of shoulder as potential sending possibility. And for white, well, of course, what white want the best? The best result for white will be, for example, I have some stones on the top side and so work with this, this as a moil and eventually big or small, but I circle it as territory. For example, I will probably show you a wider dreaming situation. What a dreaming situation will be like something like this. So if I get those stones and make this as territory, please note earlier I have mentioned what has the flaws on his wall, those cutting point. And normally please remember. Yeah, here we say a cutting point is a bigger problem because it may directly work. B cutting point is a smaller problem because it only works with a premise. Because for now, one can net it, as you have mentioned. But please remember, no matter what kind of cutting point, once it is a cutting point, it means you owe the opponent something. Do you understand me? Once it is a cutting point, in other words, you have a cutting point, you owe the opponent something. Is that understandable or not? Okay, good. So basically, whenever there's a cutting point there on your own shape, 
is more or less party opponents supposed to actually get something out from there. Yeah, that is a, that is a fair result. And if what is capable to accomplish the four spots here I have mentioned, I, yeah, I have shown here, or something similar, and this is all territory, basically it means what is making the territory without paying the debt he's supposed to pay to black. Then what is leading the game? That is what's here. If what is, is capable to accomplish, this is a dreaming situation. And for black, black will gonna do his best to prevent this happen. And also, yeah, as a, also for black dreaming situation will be black want to show your outside is problematic. If possible, I'm gonna cut at A, for example, or maybe cut at B. So I'm gonna attack your outside. Your outside is not strong shape. That will be black dream situation. Then you know that, okay, for both sides, both sides has a goal to each other. Then in the rest of the board, you need to actually work for the circumstances with this corner, with this corner. So to create the circumstances that, that you're going to approach to your goal. This is actually, then from this, now I guess you, it is actually similar to this variation, although this is a very short one, and the other one is a very long one. Did you see that? No matter what kind of dream circuit you have played, in the rest of the board, yeah, once it is influence-related, or there are stones facing to the center, high stones, the rest of the board need to work with it or work against it. I hope this is understandable. Yeah, I would say this is the most important than any specific variation. Because upon those variations, you can always do pattern search and find it out from pro games. But this is more important than the variations because, yeah, you know the variations, which variation I should choose. Or sometimes, well, I have learned all those pro variations, but in my game, under the current circumstances, I don't think any of them suit it. Then you play your moves as your understanding on the right direction, what you should choose. And then, basically, if you remember earlier, I have mentioned about in that upper goal and the courteous first game in their review at the bottom right corner. Yeah, why he, uh, yeah, Fan Hua has shown us about in Fuseki, it is direction. Direction is the most important thing. It is not points. Okay, I hope this is understandable. Is this understandable? Or is, is there any question? Okay, good. Okay, then we come back to this variation. Um, I'm not sure, uh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I need to talk again. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure uh, any of you has watched that there was some uh, uh, videos that is made by a Chinese channel called VGTV and uh, they have made some uh, videos about AlphaGo and uh, AlphaGo with AlphaGo games commentary and uh, they are in total five episodes and those five games are not really inside those 50 games uh, DeepMind has given. And uh, they have invited the uh, Chinese top players to comment about the, yeah, the, 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 those games with Fan Hui. So Fan Hui will going to supply some uh, AlphaGo uh, yeah, AlphaGo statistics. Okay, so you have seen it. Has any of you have seen, seen, seen that? Uh, be, uh, I'm asking this one because this that one could be slightly difficult for uh, the Kurdi uh, with AlphaGo. They are with English subtitles. The yeah, and the, about those AlphaGo against AlphaGo games, those five games that is uh, from VGTV. Uh, as my best knowledge, only the first episode has uh, uh, has the sub English subtitles and actually only partly, not completely. Yeah, so probably many of you have. Okay, so but okay, I can see a few of you have. Okay, okay. So for those who has who have seen it, okay, then I think it is in the last the game five. Yeah, in this specific variation. Yeah, I forgot played came. And that was, yeah, that one in that variation, played Gamer. 
and uh, yeah, the other AlphaGo as white played this organ. Okay, so here, why here in the, yeah in that game AlphaGo this came jump. The first intention is actually to prevent white to attach because after white attach is difficult to prevent white to actually take the. Yeah, in the variation I have showed above, black did, but with the price, white white get the outside. And we know that AlphaGo normally prefer him. Yeah, because the influence is actually about future. Yeah, so yeah, AlphaGo cares about future rather than solid points. Yeah, so the first function is to prevent that. And the second function clearly is when you jump here, we know that white actually has the push and the next push center. That means white, this screw will be strong, then automatically this don't become weak. Yeah, that is the reasoning why AlphaGo plays this camera shape. Yeah, so if you understand about this Jozaki is follow up and uh, yeah, some of the related analysis, then you will understand yeah, why AlphaGo play here? Or in the future, when you, for example, watch some pro game, and in that pro game, uh, the pro has played some moves you have never seen before. Okay, that will gonna be helpful for you to understand. Okay, and be, yeah, so in, in this variation, what has the attachment in the corner? What has those push? So what is considered as something relatively strong? So here, when this jump happens, Yes, sometimes white actually attach in the corner so to take the base, but sometimes white actually made directly pins, for example, that's also a possibility. But in yeah, because black this came uh, just one line difference and it has taken away white attaching attachment in the corner and also white forty move in the center. So suddenly white feel like his group is weak. And that is the reason in that game, yeah, the white Africa played this all game uh, so to get some eye shape. Yeah, I just want to introduce this. I can explain why in that AlphaGo against AlphaGo game, this happened. Yeah, it has something to do with what we have talked about earlier, that variation and the follow up. I hope that's clear. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, let's say, information about those, I suggest you to check on YouTube. There's a channel I think is called. Go World video, Go World videos, and they have all those episodes. And uh, when you watch, when you watch that, uh, those episodes uh, that without English subtitles, yeah, they are speaking Chinese. You may not really understand their language, but if you understand the Go, I would say you still understand what in general what they are talking about because they are showing variations at the same time on the board. Ah, thank you. All right, okay, so I hope this example is clear. Um, okay, um, yeah, I actually have prepared more variations. Let's see if we finish those variations today. Okay, so this is a Joseki. Uh, yeah, this is actually an old alpha Joseki. I mean old, yeah, I will, I will explain about yeah, so I believe some of you have seen this variation, have you? This variation? Okay. Um, okay, first I want to know what do you think about this variation? And uh, I would appreciate if you are, you are going to try to use, let's say, the, yeah, the way I have analyzed up this corner earlier. If you can try, that's perfect. Aha, okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. You said about 25 black, fair, black, fair, pink. Uh, if you choose which color you're going to pick. 
Ah, yeah, because wild plays this skill turn, which restricts black influence, right? Aha, okay, good. Okay, but yeah, so earlier I have asked that question. This corner, if you're going to choose, which color you prefer? Okay, sure. Okay, thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, so you all pick white. Mm. Okay, that's good choice. I uh, I believe probably some of you have already uh, read about on Facebook uh, the post from Adia Huang, and Adia Huang has actually told us about this variation. Uh, this variation, that's why I'm saying this variation is considered as an old AlphaGo Joseki because uh, Adia Huang has told us, according to AlphaGo, after white play this Q10, especially if bottom right corner is a white corner, uh, this corner, black, we're going to lose 15%. So black winning rate, we're going to drop 15%. So this is no longer a uh, Joseki variation anymore. And uh, so, yes, this is the variation. Yeah, you, you, you're all right that here we're supposed to choose white. And because white has a corner with points and it's solid, it's alive. For black, this outside, once again, black has this outside influence. And uh, uh, yeah, one of you have mentioned that this influence is difficult to use, but that's just one factor. Please never forget the detail. Detail is here. And here, there is a white stone. And if white choose to run out of that stone, black will be separated into two. Or if black add a move there, black is connected. In other words, although this is a white stone, we consider that as a cutting point. Understandable? Because this is just same as a cutting point. A cutting point means I cut you, you are cut into two. Or you add a move, you are connected. Here it's same. Maybe this is a cutting point with two points and an eye. If black chose to capture it, but this is a cutting point. Okay, this is understandable. I hope. And now we come to the next. This is a cutting point. Can white easily choose to run it? Do you think white can white can choose? For example, not black tanuki. Can white choose? Okay, now I'm gonna run it. Okay, I believe you heard my question. Ah, you don't know. Okay. Okay, when you say you don't know, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Michael, you don't... I'm saying, do you think what we're going to choose to run? It's not about the shape is ugly or what. Shape is secondary. Alphago also told us about that. Question is, what is your criteria? What is your criteria on should what choose to, to run or not? You need to have a clear criteria. Do you have a criteria? That's pretty good. Yeah, profit. Mm, yeah, okay. At least it's it's a very close. I would uh, yeah okay. I would use if uh, I would use the other word is the benefit, because we know that if white run that uh, that stone, white itself will become a group. Well, black on both sides they are both groups. So question is here we are gonna have a conflict. Conflict. In other words, here, let's use real life language. We're going to have a war here. Okay? So, why are we going to start a war? We only start a war on the gold border when we can benefit out from it. If you say we're going to start a war and uh, we, yeah, we can see at the end of, at the, the end of the war, we're going to lose a lot. Okay? Nobody we're going to do this war, right? Then we're going to prevent this war to happen from the start. That's also the case in real, in real life, right? Okay, so here, 
The problem is, if one of the tools to run out here, yeah, for example, yeah, we just take this one as an example, okay? Yeah, so like this, black right side has some eye shape, right? And the black on the top, it is an important one because here, yeah, we are talking to second follow up. And then this is something I need you to see on the top side. In the future, if black play, normally black play clamp. And if white choose to go forward, black will just gonna turn here, get the outside move and sacrifice that, that one stone. So he got a C and E to support, then his group gets stronger. So white will very likely, when clamp happens, white just connect back. And so in the future, black may choose to actually Play C, Nobby, so to so to turn so to just get some eye shape on the top side. So in other words, if you can see there's A existing, black top side group also has some eye shape, right? Yeah, so black on the top side has some eye shape. Black on the left side has, has some eye shape. What is in the center is ugly, it doesn't matter. The problem is where is its eye shape? It doesn't really have an eye shape, right? Not yet. So if that, yeah, for, for that group, he still need to run and he still need to seek for his eye shape. In other words, here, here, if it come to such a fight, yeah, you are saying what benefit is unclear. I would rather say if it comes to conflict, white it will be likely under attack because both sides of black group is pretty strong if not completely alive yet. So basically, it is yeah. What what white did if like this is very much like a drunken guy standing in front of bar and say, "Let's fight." Well, if yeah, you know he's drunk and his hand is probably not very powerful. Uh, yeah, I guess you can see the, the following picture already. <laughs> yeah, so this is a picture, yeah? And that is actually why uh, I'm not sure how much you have seen from uh, the Masters games, Masters series. Yeah, I guess you know, yeah, the Masters 60 games from the internet against the professional players. I'm not sure how much you have seen that. About 10 games, okay. Well, okay, I recommend you to watch more and uh, just to try to understand it, okay? But it doesn't matter. So in one of the games, I think it's game 41, and it's a uh, master against, against Kim Ji Sok. This variation happens, and uh, White played the pincer, Black didn't really continue. And the next move, AlphaGo played Ogemon. So white is not running directly. On the contrary, white is actually playing some distance away from that, which also values. Yeah, this A move values for himself in that game for the for, for the bottom right situation. Also for the center. Okay? And uh, he's giving black pressure on you don't add a move, I'm gonna run it in the future. And in that game, Black basically chose to Tanuki again. So Black is saying, I'm not afraid. And then after that, AlphaGo played another game. So he's still not running it. He still just played the outside and threatening. And he's saying my A and B both value, and you need to add a move there. You owe me money, you need to add a move there. And in the game, Kim Ji Sok still doesn't really want to act there. He played something around, uh, around this line. I, yeah, so so to try to break between A and the right side Q10 stones, and it actually cost a life. Yeah, that is what that is what have what that is what happening there. So basically, what AlphaGo played A told us. Yeah, do you remember earlier I have mentioned once it is a cutting point, and you have a cutting point, it means you owe the opponent. So you know, let's say the important part. The important part of that cutting point is as the one, 
as the one who has a calling point. You are actually in the following game when you want to do your best to prevent to pay the debt or to pay smaller than the amount you owe. And for the other side, it's not clear. I want to get the amount you owe me. Yeah, otherwise, that area, yeah, let's say initially this corner is supposed to be what is in advantage. If I cannot really get that amount back, then probably it's not so bad to black. Maybe it's even good to black. But if what can I actually get that amount back, then what is good? That is why AlphaGo played A and B in the yeah, in the following. You can actually watch that master game 41. I hope that's clear. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so this is about this corner. So I guess the basically about that cutting point and on the top side around 018, it is clear. Okay, so finally we come to this, yeah, this Joseki. So let's say once again, according to uh, what uh, Adia Fans post of, yeah, from AlphaGo's point. So here, when this move happens, black crack move is supposed to be this jump. And what push here, black push, push again, and black to play to space extension. Okay, so here, what black get is something relatively solid. Right side and the top side is two spaces, two space extension. The important part is what what gap here. Yeah, what get some outside influence, right? And is that outside influence flawless? Yeah, we are always talking about this. It's not flawless. What is the flaw? The K ma, all right. Okay, that is pretty good because the yeah, white has a K ma shape. Then potentially it means that there is some sort of cutting point. So for example, I just give a simple example. While black just a tiger here, there's a cutting point, right? So at least for example, black might consider to peep in the future. But if it's just this cutting point, it's not a big problem, right? And also black tiger here, this will want to help white a lot in the future to easily get this attachment. So, yeah, although this, this tiger will want to create a cutting point, black wouldn't easily do it. Okay, but here, earlier we have talked about that corner, because that corner is one thing. After this variation, that is undecided. I remember a few weeks ago, I have played a teaching game one of my strongest students. And in that game, yeah, because he had learned from me, so he had learned about this alpha variation. And in that game, he played this attachment. I honey. And then in the game, he kick and I connect. And I want to tell you, in that, yeah, after the game, in the review, I have a criticized about his this exchange. Do you understand why? Yeah, this might be slightly advanced. Yes, but if it's just that, I wouldn't blame him. Okay, here I will probably review the answer. So normally here, I connect this one. If in the future it's just a push and I peep, it basically made almost no difference with earlier black play the tiger and then come to peep, right? Yeah, uh, double honey is a small factor, uh, Michael. Here, the bigger factor is this shape basically give black another possibility to peep, and that peep is here. This is the major reason. Earlier, you think about it, if it's just a tiger here, yeah, if the, the in this shape, will black ever consider to peep this one and give white a perfect tiger? This will never gonna happen. But now, because black didn't get to, yeah, black doesn't need to push there anymore. Black now have this peep. And this peep is actually stronger as attacking to, yeah, to, to white outside.
Okay. Uh, I guess you yeah you can see why this the people are this strong attack, right? Because here, if black want to attack white uh, white this group, then basically black want to move his these peeping stones as much as possible towards the bottom, towards the right. And if it's just this peep, if it's just this peep, it's too much towards the top. So here, with white help, black actually peep one line lower, and that will help. Well, yeah, for, for this attack. I remember in that game, it happened that here, my peep here, and my that student, he doesn't really want to uh, just answer. So he played counter-attack, and that actually gave me a perfect, yeah, this shoulder. So he need to defend this line, and then I, I peep here, and he did this one, and connect, and then my next move is a came so to attack by the entire group. So you can see here, if what is slightly careless, although this outside look like influence, but if at the end it is under attack, it is the case that black has top side extension, black has the red side territory, and black has to attack white. Then everything is black. So here, once again, this white, because what white get is outside influence, it requires white to work with the whole board, and you need to be very careful about this kind of detail cutting point. Yeah, this kind of detail can easily decide, uh, yeah, or let's say to change a local result. I hope that's clear. All right. So, okay, Michael, earlier you have mentioned white can double honey in the corner. Uh, that is a very small factor. Here, the bigger factor is about the all that cutting point. All right, good. Yeah, okay. Uh, basically, this is uh, yeah, this is all the yeah, and I noticed we are already a little bit of time. But I hope, let's say, after my lecture today, now you understand it better about how you're supposed to analyze Yuseki after the Yuseki is done. And then you, you will gonna notice what you will need to care about after a Joseki variation. And how you're gonna work with it in the rest of the game. How to help to create a good circumstances in order to get the rest part of the value out from that corner. So basically, if you say in the rest of the, yeah, in the rest of, the, for example, I still play corner. I still play the variation. That is in general, even, but, let's say my variations automatically you're gonna be helpful to support me to get the rest of the value in this corner that will gonna give you give you the chance to get the lead in the game this is how we understand about go i hope that's clear and uh, yeah of course you you will still have to do after the lecture that is if there's any variation here, you say, I have never seen it, or I have seen it, but there are some sub variations I'm not very clear about. I especially, what if one color we're gonna play at this moment, do this, then what will, what will gonna happen? You need to actually then do, yeah, let's say, find some online pattern search and find out the related variations so to figure it out. But I hope here I've already showed you about under the premise, if you know those variations, then how are you gonna choose? That is, that is the point of our lecture today, okay? Well, okay, yeah, in that case, I guess for our lecture today, and uh, yeah, normally at the end of the lecture, I will give a bit time to answer your questions. So you have any questions, I'm here for another probably like 10 minutes. You can ask your questions that is this lecture related or anything go related. Okay. Well, okay. So if uh, nobody has any questions, let's just uh, finish here today. Thanks. And uh, I'm looking forward to talk, to talk to you again 
the other topic probably in a month. Okay. Thank you. Okay, see you. Bye.